to this program today. This is Focus Africa series, powered by Business Day newspaper. And I want to welcome you especially to the first edition of this program, live with Mr. Enes Akinola, um, the MD CEO of Right Instinct Limited. So today, I'm glad to have all of you on this show um, today to discuss with um, successful people around Africa, telling the authentic stories of the challenges and their success stories. That you agree with me that most of the people we see today who are very successful at one time or, or the other have had their own challenges. And today, we're not just going to be focusing on that success stories they've had. We also want to hear the aspect of the challenges they've had building up their businesses. And that is what this show is all about. So on this show, we'll be interviewing people from different countries in Africa, namely from Zimbabwe, Botswana, Kenya, Lesotho, Namibia, Egypt, Nigeria, Ghana, wherever they are. We're going to fish them out, talk to them, and get to hear their story. So on this show today, I have Mr. Enes Akinola, and we're going to be very, very brief. We don't intend to keep you so long. We're going to get to the point, tell you five to seven things you didn't know about them, the things they've been working on, the ladder they've had to climb, whether they are still in career business, they're in career jobs, or they are running businesses by their side. You get to hear all of them on this show today. So, ladies and gentlemen, this Focus Africa service is powered by the one and only premier business platform in Nigeria called the Business Day Media, um, Business Day Newspaper. So we're here today on this show with Mr. Ennis. Help me um, introduce yourself, Mr. Ennis, to my viewers. Just say good morning or something. Mr. Ennis, unmute your mic. We can't hear you. All right. I, you had the host had muted me. Good morning, everybody. Uh, very good to be here this morning. Thank you very much for hosting me uh, today. Uh, when uh, Success mentioned this to me, I was more than willing to have this conversation. So, um, yes, looking forward to having this chat. Okay, welcome on the program, Mr. Ernest. And to all our viewers, I want to do a brief introduction on Mr. Ernest. And so we get right into the business of the day. So Mr. Enes Akinola is currently the, the, the president and the CEO of Right Instinct Limited. But for over 25 years, he has worked in the telecom industry. He's actually a telecom titan. That's how we like to call him. You know, he is just um, the former CEO of Enter Communications, which is formerly Nitel, um, Nitel, right? Nitel in Nigeria, Nigeria Telecommunication Company. So he is also, he has worked as CEO at um, Lycra Mobile in the UK. He's also the, he was also the CMO of Etisala Nigeria, which is now Nine Mobile. Then business development director at Blackberry Nigeria before. And he has also worked as a director strategic um, partnerships at T-Mobile UK. You've had quite a lot of experiences. He was also the head commercial partnerships Virgin Mobile UK. You know, there's something about Mr. NS. He has also um, given his expertise in all the things he's tried to do, especially in the telecom, telecom industry. He has led an inaugural entrepreneurial boot camp project at World Bank Washington. That's beautiful. So today, I have the privilege, the honor of hosting the one and only Mr. Ernest on this show. You know, there's something about um, Ernest I need all of you to know. He's a hands-on person. Um, we run Africa Leadership and Economic Summit, and I've played host to a number of delegates from across Africa, and consistently, Mr. Ernest has delivered on our platform, and each time he speaks, people want to hear him speak more. So we've said we're going to have him on this show to discuss how he was able to climb the ladder, how he was able to work in such big blue chip organizations around the world and what his success story is. So once again, thank you so much for coming on this show today, Mr. Ernest. No, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. And uh, I have a lot to share. All right, so let's get right into it. Um, I would like my um, slides to be shared so we move forward with what we have to do today so that we can go sure. very quickly. So like I said before, this is Focus 
Africa series powered by Business Day. Yes, Focus Africa series powered by Business Day. So right there on the screen, you can see it, Focus Africa powered by Business Day. So today we are hosting Mr. Enes Akinola, who is the CEO of Right Instinct Limited. Okay, so Mr. Enes, are you ready for me? I'm ready, more than ready. <laughs> okay, so Mr. Enes, to my first question today, you have had a distinguished career reaching the exalted level of a CEO in so many iconic companies and now running Right Instinct Limited. Please share with us your journey experience and explain more about what you are doing right now. Okay, so very good. Um, I'd like to go back to um, Genesis, really, the genesis of, of, of everything, you know. Um, from a very young age, I've always wanted to uh, become the best version of myself. And I always start these conversations with talking about my school, my secondary school in Maryland, um, in Lagos, which really honed um, our, our, our intentions in life, you know, our ambitions in life. So um, when I finished my secondary education, I came to, back to the UK where I was born. And um, I started off on the journey by myself. You know, my parents were still in, in Nigeria and I worked my way through everything by myself with my younger brother. And, you know, um, that gives you a lot of responsibility and focus on the very kind of thing. You can imagine back in the 80s, lots of hardship, wasn't easy by yourself. But I always believed that what I was taught in school and what I was taught by my great mother, may her soul rest in peace, would take me through. So, how did my journey start? Well, I first, after leaving the university, um, where I read economics, um, I, I, I graduated and then I wanted to move into um, what, what you call the graduate training scheme. Now, graduate training schemes were the most, um, what I say, the most coveted types of schemes that a graduate would go into. They'd get you to work in different departments in the company and um, they were fiercely competitive, fiercely competitive. And um, I wasn't successful. You know, I tried everything. I just couldn't get into this graduate training scheme. So what I did was I decided early on that if the process wasn't going to enable me to achieve, to, to, to join a scheme, I'd create my own um, training scheme. So what I did was I started training as an accountant. I qualified as an accountant working in industry and practice. There's many companies that you haven't mentioned. I worked at Glaxo and UPS, crafting my way through, just driving, not accepting what people would say that, oh, you can't do this or you can't achieve that. Yes, I didn't have any support system. But what I had was the belief, the belief of where I was from, from what my mother told me. What you're told as a kid is very, very important. So it never really stopped me. I, I always experienced challenges every single day. Today I've experienced challenges, tomorrow I experience challenges. But my upbringing has enabled me to keep on pushing. And then I keep on using that um, all the time. So from my career, I, I did things that everybody said could not be done. Um, when I, I qualified as an accountant, I was working at one-to-one. -one. I had an exemplary career there. I had four different roles there, four different departments. I wasn't qualified, I was an accountant. But I worked in project management, I worked in sales, I worked in marketing. I became CMO of market, uh, CMO of Etisalat. I, I wasn't qualified as, I didn't do chartered institutes of marketing. What I did though was I believed in myself, right? So I've had a career that spans industry and also spans entrepreneurialism. Um, I believe, um, I like to use a quote, if you can conceive it, you can achieve it. And that's basically living a testimony of my life, right? And I always, you know, I, I remember one time when I was appointed a CEO of Intel, I always felt I was going to be a CEO. I didn't know how it was going to happen, but I knew that as long as I kept pushing and making sure that I was the best version of myself, that I would do so. And I remember one of my former people that I met in NYSC. He oh. was, yes, I did my NYSC when I was 44, when I was at Etisala, um, which was kind of interesting because I just used it as an opportunity to identify talent um, in, um, of the 22 year olds and brought them into the company. 
And the, one of them said to me, he was so excited I was made to see you at the time. He said, you know what, Ernest, all the things that you tell us, um, I believe that if you want to become president, you will become president. And, you know, and I don't want to become president. It's not my aspiration. But the point that he was making is that if you want to achieve something, what you think is what you will become. And so the whole purpose of my life and everything I've achieved is about belief. And that's the, that's the bottom line that I, will, I would say to that. Amazing, amazing. This is a fast, fascinating journey, man. I, 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 I have to summarize this now. This journey has been very, very well planned and well executed. I mean, we are impressed with what you've done, what you've achieved working in the career office. I, I, I'd like to tell you, sir, that um, what you've tried to, what you've achieved, you know, growing up as a career is very phenomenal and a lot of people are looking forward to achieving the same. So what would you say is the secret of finding what you are meant to do? Um, right, so this is, um, this is a very interesting question because most people, uh, most people are not doing exactly what they would love to be doing or what they feel inside of them to be doing. A recent poll by, by Gallup um, um, shows that 85% um, of people in jobs are dissatisfied with their jobs. Out of 1 billion working, the workforce in the world is 1 billion. So 850 million people are not satisfied with what they do. That means that we're all looking for something new. And there's previous reasons why they're not. That means that we're all looking for So there seems to be some interference. Um, there's, there's various reasons for why there's, there's satisfying jobs. Um, and I will not go all of them. But one of the biggest issues is we don't seek what we know is inside of us because of fear of failure, fear of trying. Um, expectations of others um, that will suppress your inner talent because you're expected to do something else. And it's very hard if you're told from a young age that this is where you are and then the whole processes in life reinforce that, that this is your level, then you, it's very hard to break out of that. So you have a lot of frustrated, talented people um, wanting to do something but not having the courage to do it. And the opposite of courage is not, uh -huh. the opposite of courage is not cowardice. It's conformity. We all conform, right? And it takes years of experience or enlightenment to understand that, you know what? I would design to be X. That's what I really enjoy. I want to now go and become that X. So what's the process? Throughout my life, I've, I've always gone through all these different challenges myself, fine tuning combined with my belief. And I've come to the conclusion that through a lot of research and, ex and conversations, I've, been, I've recruited over 300 people in my career. So I know a lot about how the mindset works. And I think there's three dimensions to defining who you are. I think we're influenced by three key factors. One is the spiritual, the second, is your subconscious, yourself, and the third are your supporters. Now, let me talk about those three. And, um, but before I talk about them, the key point is this, each one of those in, um, factors will, will, will give you an insight into who you are and what you're supposed to achieve. When you have alignment across all those three, then you have the blueprint of yourself. Now, let me just, I won't go into all of the detail, but. One of the programs that we're going to start running on Right Instinct is looking at these three areas. The spiritual. Now, we are all spiritual beings, right? You know, um, uh, I'm, I'm a very firm believer in God Almighty. Um, I, I think he's really helped me along the way. Um, but sometimes we don't listen to, to God. We don't listen to him. Um, if you remember the story of, um, there's, a, there's a, um, a paragraph, uh, a quote in the Bible, Proverbs 18, 16. It says, God has given you a talent, right? He has given you a talent. You have a purpose. You need to find that purpose. 
But sometimes we're stubborn. We don't listen. We think we're clever, right? We think we know our purpose, but we need to be still and listen. If you remember the story of Gideon um, in the Bible, uh, Judges 6, if you remember the story of David, neither of these guys wanted to do what God had told them to do. God knew what they were going to do. They felt that they weren't the person. How can I be a king, David thought. How can, um, how can Gideon lead the Israelites? Um, but, but, he, he, but he had chosen them. And he has chosen every single one of us to be that special person. Now, you need to tap into that. You need to tap into hearing God. Even Jesus, when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, he, God said, I am well pleased with you. And then Jesus went into the desert for 40 days to find himself. And this, and this is very instructive, right, for me. It's you need to find who you are and you need to listen to God and adopt a process by which you can listen to God. Some people fast, some people reflect, but listen to that voice. That's one aspect. The other aspect is um, we all know inside of us, um, success, I know you very well. We've been talking and vibing for many years. Um, you're an infectious talent, right? And we all have doubts here and there, but you have been true, for instance, to yourself in that this is what you want to do right? This is what you want to do. And it comes out all the time. And that, and you've had the courage to do that. Many people, there are many successes like you out there that don't have the courage to come out of their shell. So oh. in to what God has told you and what God is telling you, there is how do you then identify and qualify what you're thinking in your subconscious? And again, there's a step, there's a process that you can go through. You can, for instance, understand what your strengths and weaknesses are. And then from that, validate that against looking at the opportunities that you would um, particular, um, pursue as a result of those strengths and weaknesses. So there's something that says, for instance, if um, uh, I have a particular strength and I've identified it, I know what my weaknesses are, what, what can I do about those weaknesses? What can I do about the opportunities that my own situation presents to myself. I read one book by um, an author in, in Nigeria. I can't remember his name, but it was, the title of the book was, What's in Your Hand? And he writes, whatever is in your hand, work with it, but you need to refine it. And again, we have a part of our program that helps you enable you to refine and identify your strengths and which direction you should be going. Now, the third aspect of understanding you is your support group. Now, your support group are what we all call our inner sanctum, our kitchen cabinet, your friends, the people that know you the best, right? They say, tell me, show me a man's friends and I'll tell you who the man is. Now, you need to get an idea from probably five people that have your interests at heart, probably have your interests at heart more than you do. It might not necessarily be your brother or your sister, right? But you know who these five people are. And there's a way of, uh, uh, of, that we can synthesize their, their views of you, anonymize. Now, when you then have that, imagine you have a situation whereby a support group thinks I am this, I think I am that, and what I'm hearing from God is the same you have an alignment, you have all the planets aligned around your personality. I'm saying this with a lot of conviction and 100% confidence. Why? Because I went through it. I didn't know I was going through it, but that's what's happened, right? And right now I am at my most content. And you know, when you're at your most content, everything is easy. Even when you have challenges, it is easy. It's a bit like when you're doing a jigsaw puzzle. Um, we all know that if you can take a piece of the jigsaw puzzle and put it somewhere, you can put some other things, other pieces around it, but they won't quite fit. But if you have, right. if you find yourself in, put the jigsaw puzzle piece in the right place, what happens? All the other pieces fit around it. But you can only achieve well, thanks, yeah. if you are yourself, if you are the right authentic version of yourself. So. Interesting, interesting. 
I think you also need to go and open a church. <laughs> you are going to have a lot of members. <laughs> You're quite spiritual here. <laughs> well, you know, you, wow, it, this is you, interesting. You, you know, you know what um, about that um, success is. Um, we we like to do MBA. I mean, um, we've all got MBA, everything, and we think we're very clever. But where did we come from? Yeah, it, it reminds me of the pharmaceutical industry. Everybody talks about. Um, you know, the, the medical industry, they, they, they don't believe in homeopathic mm. medicines, um, the, the power of plants mm. and all that type of stuff and healing oils. But here's the irony. Uh, all the medicine comes from plants, you know? So I say that mm. no matter what we're saying about our MBAs and everything, you know, and all our training courses, it always comes down to God because that's where we came from, you know? Okay, Mr. Ennis, don't justify why you need to go no, and no, open no. a church because we have a lot of it in Africa. <laughs> anyway. We have a lot of it in Africa yeah. already. All right. So, uh, Mr. Ennis, with your experience as a top flight career professional who has worked in many organizations in different countries, what advice can you give to professionals to help them progress in their careers? What practical advice will you give them given where you've worked and people you've met and things you've read and all that to help them progress in their career. Because the truth is that a lot of people are stuck and it's even more difficult right now with the current situation of things, uh, with the pandemic and all that. So what practical advice will you give to people? Okay, so, I mean, we are all different. We've, um, like I said to you um, at the beginning, um, you need to know who you are as an individual, okay? Um, I've worked in I've worked yes. in many companies. I've had great bosses. I've had horrible bosses. I've had bosses that have made me cry when I first started my career. Um, you know, I've had promotions. I've been made redundant. You know, so I've seen a lot of different things, right? And so this is my own version of my own journey. Um, I'll start with one that an Australian lady said to me one time. I was put on secondment um, to do a project at T-Mobile. And all of the project managers went on a away day, a nice away day, and I didn't get to go. So I was really upset. And so I said to this lady that, um, how could they not accept me? I know that I'm on secondment, but surely I should go. And she said, look, Ernest, you know, don't worry about things like that. Whatever job they gave you oh. to do, do the job very well, right? If they tell you to shine the door handles, hmm, and that is your job, whilst right. everybody wants something brilliant, um, make sure that those door handles are sparkling every single day, right? Don't, you might oh. feel terrible inside, yeah. but make sure that the job you are given is done very well. One day, somebody's going to come along. I mean, this is obviously a metaphor, but one day somebody's going to come along and say, who polishes those door handles? And they say, oh, it's, it's Ernest. And they say, you know what? That's amazing. We have a whole retail estate that we want to be managed. We're looking for a head of retail to manage wow. it. Those are the things that happen. When she told me this, I thought, nonsense. But you know what? She was sincere and I did it. And it's very, very true. Do the job you're given very well. Don't look at the other guy. Remember, the other guy is, in the, is a different jigsaw piece. He has to be somewhere else in the jigsaw puzzle. He's not where you are. We are all uniquely different. So do the job you're given very well. Another thing that I would also say, practical advice. When, you're, okay. when you do some work, your boss might ask you to do some work or you might be assigned a certain task a project, uh, an analysis, whatever it is. When you do it, you might work hard day and night, fine tuning this thing. You then submit the work to your boss or to the committee and they look at it, they thank you and they file it. Nothing happens. One year, nothing has happened. There is a natural feeling of resentment that why did I do all this work? It's not worth it. When he tells me to do something else again, I'm not going to put in the same level of effort. Don't think like that. Because hard work is never, ever, ever wasted. Right? It's never wasted. You will realize that 
Mm. that at one point in time, you look back at that thing you did. Maybe you learned something from it. Maybe somebody else learned something from it. You know, one day we, it will be the most important thing. So always never, never feel that you have wasted your efforts. I want to talk about envy because in the workplace, hmm, politics is plenty. I have seen politics. <laughs> I've seen politics in all facets. And you, you, you have also played politics. Well, right? you know, I've played politics on my own terms, right? You know, I have been okay. wounded by I have been wounded by politics, right? But <laughs> you, but you know, the thing is that you know, if God has a purpose for you, nothing can harm you, right? So my point is. Um, mm. When I say politics, internal, in, in, and, and it's everywhere in the world, in Italy, in America, in London, mm. any it's everywhere. So what I would say is that a lot of politics, a lot of people being on the mind when they haven't done anything or, you know, or something didn't go your way, that you wanted it to go your way, don't be envious. Don't be envious about the other person that has ascended above you because your own time is coming. Yeah. Again, I, I remember, I, I talk a lot about T-Mobile because I spent 10 years working at T-Mobile. Again, I remember I wasn't, I wasn't right. putting a certain band um, and this band, I really wanted this band, it's called Band E. And this Band E gave you a really good bonus pool, right? So I really wanted this, mm. I didn't get it. And a, another lawyer told me, she said, look, don't worry, your time will come, Ernest. You know, she was looking at me, I look at this young 32 year old guy, just calm down, your time will come. My time came so many, many times in so many miraculous ways, you know, so um, they're right. And I'm not, I'm not a genius. I'm, no, I'm not brighter than the average guy. We are all superstars in our own right. We just have to do our work well. Don't look at the other guy. Don't look at Mr. John because he's different to you. The other thing I'll also say is very important is EQ versus IQ. Now, Okay. Emotional intelligence versus academic intelligence, right? You are, you are, are turning taught... this to a master class already. <laughs> well, I, 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 don't worry, I'm going to be brief on this. Um, the, the, right. bottom line, the, the bottom line is um, we don't, we're taught how to be smart and to pass exams and how well you can articulate mm -hmm. yourself and that's it. However, Everything in the world, everything you achieve, everything you do is through another human being, is it not? You know, we're on this, yeah. we're on this call now, we have a technician. It, yes, we have technology, but it's a person that is operating it. The thing is this, the people that succeed in life are those people that understand that you are dealing with human beings. You need to understand other people's frequencies. You need to be able to tune in frequencies. You need to be able to walk in the ma in, in the, the other person's shoes, right? When I do a lot of selling um, solution-based sales, um, and when I do this, do you know, I sell to person's head and I sell to their heart. Head and heart, right. very important. You can't just sell the technical solution and expect them to get it. You need to understand where the other guy is coming from. And it's the same in the workplace positioning it's not being manipulative it's understanding you know use your emotional intelligence more than your academic intelligence it will get you very very far in business so because success says i'm doing a master class <laughs> and, and i should be charging him so i won't <laughs> so, <laughs> and you know these things are very 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 practical and they are very important at, at times like this in, hard work is very important and i uh, like what you're saying uh, there are times especially at this period where companies are retrenching and all that most of the people that will retain their job are people who add real values to organizations people who have done things in the past that are documented that can be referred to make reference to so yes. it is very very important that you do your best when nobody is watching you okay. and most times if you listen to the so, so stories of successful people they will tell you that you need to be consistent at mm -hmm. what you do so one of my mentors advised me um about five years ago and said success do one thing and do it well you know people watch even when they don't say they won't reward you in fact as a matter of fact the reward for hard work is more work so your bosses might not come out and say you did well, but they keep giving you more responsibility, which shows that they trust you 
And so it is very important to, uh, at, um, you do well in whatever you are given opportunity to do. So that's very, very practical. Thank you for that contribution, Mr. Ernest. So I'm moving on quickly to the next thing I want to ask you today. So across the world, many companies are laying off staff. They are making people redundant. That's the English you guys use in the UK and all that. So uh, it's because of companies are downsizing. They no longer can meet up with things. I mean, um, there are budget cuts, business cuts, and all stuff like that. People are liquidating their businesses as a result of COVID-19 impact. And so, but at the same time, there are a lot of graduates coming out from our schools, going into both the labor and the favor market. How should they best navigate this new and uncertain new normal? Yes, I mean, there are, um, God, you know, this is, um, I, I have children that are going to be going into this same situation. And it's something that we think about a lot, you know, um, what's going to be, I mean, even in countries like the UK, where you have some degree of soft landing, let's talk about our, uh, our children in Africa, you know, they're going to be um, impacted by this. Um, and, um, but the one thing that I would say is that, um, you know, once you've, it's very easy, most people will say that, well, uh, if there's no jobs available, people are retrenching, let me go into business. Yeah. Let me set up a business, right? Um, that's fine to think about that. But if you've just left university, you really don't understand business. I'm sorry. Unless you've been working in um, uh, um, alongside your father's shop, whatever, um, it's not that easy. I'm not saying that you should not do it, but I'm just saying that um, be, be sensible about because most people are going to fail. 67% of all startup businesses fail. No, that's it. But there's nothing wrong with failing because it's absolutely important. But let's talk about some practical things. I'm a graduate. I've come onto the work scene. There aren't any jobs available. Time is going. We've seen some people in the past, it's not the first time we've entered a recession whereby they'll go and become a taxi driver or whatever, just do anything to make money. That's fine. You, know, you might have a side hustle. That's fine. But remember, as time is going by, you're getting older and you need to keep on feeding your brain. If you want to become an engineer and there are no engineering jobs, then I always advocate, go and volunteer. Go and volunteer and work at that place. If you want to learn um, dentistry, if you want to learn project management, put yourself available into those places that you want to see yourself grow and do it for free. Beg your mom, your dad, or your support system, your supporters, to give you money for transport and for lunch. Mm. And go and do this thing for free. Even if you do it for a year, what have you gained? You've gained coveted experience. Experience, yeah. You have gained coveted experience. You haven't, don't be angry with, uh, with the presidents of your countries. <laughs> and don't be angry with the lack of opportunities. Because as they say, if a, if a man pushes you to the ground, it's that man's fault. If you're still sitting on the ground 10 minutes later, it's your own fault. Your fault. Take right. So every cloud has a silver lining. Even COVID has a silver lining. So take this opportunity to learn and to do and to show experience. If you then have a CV after one year to say, I have done, delivered four projects that you didn't get one cobble for your, for your work, right? But you have done the work. Guess what happens when the economy turns around? When the economy turns around, you have evidence and you have experience. So to me, to me, um, I'm just, just being very real here. Um, don't, don't be angry. Don't, um, don't blame anybody. Feed your brain, learn, keep on learning, keep on experiencing. The worst, the worst thing that can happen is A, you get hired, B, you build experience, right? And C, you develop character. Character is very, very important. You know, character is very, very important. When you're, when you, and if you're setting up a business, right, and you want to go for funding, do you know that investors, they look at the business model, but they look at the character of the man. 
They want to know that you have failed. They want to know that you have strived, you know, and you've, you've shown initiative, right? Very, very important. So I think the key plank for me is, um, is don't always look for the opportunities where there are no opportunities. I remember one guy told me one time in Nigeria when I first came in 2009, he said, um, Nigeria is the, I, I actually said Africa is the only place in the world where you can open your front door and start collecting money off the ground. From, from people, yes. From the ground. He said, however, you have to wear the right type of glasses to be able to see it. If you're acting like somebody should do you a favor, some, some people suffer from entitlement. Entitlement culture, you know? There's no entitlement anymore. You know, embrace digital. There are so many learning, there are so many courses online, practical courses online that are free. Instead of spending time on Facebook and, and on YouTube, right? Unless you're watching a fantastic series like this on YouTube, but instead of spending time on YouTube, um, just watching videos, go onto YouTube, go onto places like Future Learn and, and do practical courses that will teach you stuff that you can then use to enhance your, your employment prospects. Three week course, absolutely free, you know? So that's what I would say. That's what I was, and of course, from a macro level, we need our governments to do the right things, um, but we are in unprecedented times. But even in these unprecedented times, people will make money and people will be successful because it's just a cycle. Wow, wow, interesting. Uh, Ms. Dennis, I've been involved with a lot of work um, when it, it comes to youth and career people and business people through some of our platforms and all that. And one of the things we've consistently noticed is that Africans, we have dependency syndrome on someone else. We have dependency syndrome on government, on our uncles, on our daddies and everybody else. So we're not taking absolute responsibilities of our lives and all that when it comes to creating opportunities. Like you rightly say, we watch the wrongest things when we have opportunity to go to the internet. But those that invented the internet use it to do businesses and they post all sorts of things and we read and waste our times and all that. So it is important we get into how to help people do the right things. And I know you have these experiences, having worked in the career um, path and also in business these days and all that. People want to start businesses, either as a side hustle, as option B, or as men entrepreneurs and all that but they don't know how to go about these things. What, yeah. practical, what practical considerations should we consider? What practical things should we consider when going into businesses? What things should we look out for? And how can we run these things? Sure. I mean, I've, 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 touched, a, I've, I've touched on a few of these things already because we're all, yes. we're all human beings. But, but on this particular point, which I'm ultra passionate about, um, being a being a an entrepreneur, I have an entrepreneurial line as well of things that I've done alongside my other career. So exactly. I will start off by first of all saying this: that the sky is big enough for many birds to fly in. Right? You know, very very important because sometimes we can look at another person's success or what somebody else is doing, and then we feel that ah, you know, I I can't do it. No. You have your own ecosystem around you. You have your own friends. You have your own unique talent that God has put in you. So first of all, you've made that decision, great. You've understood that that's the route that you want to go. Everything is possible. I'm a very positive person. Now, um, next thing is this. Um, I, don't, uh, I, I strongly advocate that when you set up a business, think about what the purpose of your business is. Is it to solve a problem? You know, is it to improve a process? Those are the things that you need to be adding value. What is the value add of your business? Now, a, a few people have set up um, right now during COVID, they've set up, people are into sanitizer business. So people are into face mask, face shield. Oh. Practically a lot of people that I know are doing that now as a, either a side hustle or as a business, trying to tweak it. Now, personally, for me, I do not knock anybody. You need to do what you need to do. 
But for me, I like to adopt the words of Warren Buffett, which are, be fearful where others are greedy and be greedy where others are fearful. If you rush into doing what everybody else is doing, then you have two things. You, you're just creating competition straight away. You are limiting the margins of your business, right? Um, and you're also arguably, you, you're not, not building in sustainability, you know, because you want your business to, to be sustainable. What I, I heard recently, somebody has gone into building their own sanitizer spray. And oh. Seven Up apparently have now brought out their own and has just wiped their model. And that's the thing. When you, when, if you look, if you sell salt or if you sell water and everybody else sells salt and water, they're homogenous commodities. <laughs> Everybody's doing the same thing. So I like yeah. to look, look, look for a process, look for a, something that is broken or something that can be improved. Look for some digital technology that can enhance a manual process. And that's, what, that, that's the sort of thing that will enable you to sustain your business and to grow it. So um, it's about focus and it's about not necessarily following the herd. You know, be, be ready to, I like what you said about this dependency syndrome. The other syndrome that we suffer from in Africa is we suffer from immediacy syndrome. I want immediate profits today. Oh. It doesn't happen like that. The richest man in the world um, didn't, didn't happen like that. They grafted, they experimented innovation all the time, right? You know, so the, the, the point is that we, sh we need to have a long-term view. When you set up a business, think about where the ball is going to be, not where the ball is now. You know, where is it going yeah. to be? Try and be there in your thinking process. People might laugh at you, right? Because they don't get it. They're thinking about money now, today. But think about how I can become relevant forever. So it's about focus on, on long, you know, here versus the future. Secondly, I hear these quotes all day long. Nigeria has 200 million population. Africa has 1.25 billion population. Everybody's piling into Africa. Oh, there's so much. Yes, fantastic. But within that nation, within Africa, you have many strata of income groups, right? You have massive poverty. Yeah. yeah. So we should not confuse total addressable market with total obtainable market. When you decide on when you're deciding on your business proposition, don't think I'm going to have access to 200 million people. Think how many people can I really reach with my proposition? If I have something that is heavily data dependent and I have a great business and it's all about data, how many people can afford data? So when you're doing your business case for your business, very important to understand that you need to fine tune it to, no, you can't build your business case on, I'm going to have 100,000 customers in the first year. No, shave it down to maybe 5,000, right? If it works okay. at 5,000, then you have a viable business, right? Because then you have to market it as well. So and I find a lot of people make that mistake and that's why they fail because they haven't really dimensioned their proposition against the market very well. Um, Secondly, or fourthly, who is, who, is, who is better placed to achieve a um, uh, success in business? The pioneer or the follower? This is a question that people always like to debate. And I've been reading up, up on this over the last few weeks. And the view is that there's nothing wrong in being a pioneer, right? There's nothing wrong in being a pioneer. Um, first move advantage. If, if it's your idea, nothing wrong with it, but it should not be what you are aiming for because the problem with being a first mover is that it's a bit like when you're watching a race, you know, like somebody's running a um, 5,000 meter race. There's always, okay. always somebody that starts off the race first and goes to the front. I've never seen that person start a 5,000 meter race in the front and win the race. Why? Uh -huh. Because the guy that can really win the race just stays immediately behind him and he's just following him. 
until he wants to kick and then he overtakes him. So being the first, um, is there's nothing wrong with being the first. If that's where you have found yourself, then great. But it shouldn't be that you're rushing to be it. Sometimes it's good to let, let your decision, let your, let your proposition, let your idea marinate for a while, soak it up, keep on refining it, experimenting it, refining it before you launch. Don't be too quick to launch because you want to be the first. You know, see what other people are doing. Learn from their mistakes. It's a foolish man that doesn't learn from another person's mistake now. So to me, to me, I think that it's very important that you, um, you know where you are, you test your proposition, you know your market size, you know, you've solved, you add value, definitely add value. Now, finally, on this point, I want to talk about you and I, we might have a very strong, strong opinions about something that we want to do. But as yeah. a businessman, you might say, I am going to, I am going to supply um, ladies' dresses in Ikeja, and that is all I want to do, right? Now, if this is what your calling is, and you feel that you want to do that, that's fine. But don't, we, we use this phrase in T-Mobile, hold your strong opinions loosely. Have a strong wow. opinion, but hold it loosely because that means that you need to be ready to pivot and take, ad and take advantage and cognizance of the changing dynamics around you. If you find out that they don't want ladies dresses in Ikeja, but they want men's shoes in Mushi, are you not going to go and do the shoes? You need to be flexible. Don't be too regimental about what you are doing. Um, I know some guy right now, he's developed a fantastic program. His father wants him to do X, but, and the father is thinking it, that this is the way it needs to be. But the guy say, no, I want to be more open. So don't be too regimented about your opinions that you think that you're so smart, right? Be practical, be nimble, and be able to pivot when the opportunity arrives. Wow, I, I love this. You said, hold your strong ideas loosely. The first time I heard you say that, I actually had to um, um, stay on it, think about it for a long time to allow it to sink in. I mean, that's a beautiful quote there. Thank you for your contribution so far. Um, before I go to the next question, there's something I, I want your opinion on. I read an article that uh, we're talking about businesses and what people can start on mm. what people can invest in or expand in and all that. So I read an article that says 10 people, um, successful people do, successful business people do, but they will tell you not to do. So one of them is that successful people will tell you to save, but they don't save. Successful people will tell you take a break, but they never really travel on uh, vacation to have pleasure. While they're on vacation, they are working and all that. And successful people will tell you, don't put all your eggs in one basket and also, what is your opinion on this? Talking about how people, what kind of business people can start, what they can divest into. Okay, you mean in terms of those, um, th those mantras that the, that the people say and then they don't do yeah. them? Yeah, exactly. well, 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 the thing is this, right? Um, <laughs> I was smiling when you said that. I remember going to a... Um, uh, a seminar once in, in Nigeria and um, they said that don't be sleeping that when the other guy is sleeping that's mm. what you're working right um, and yeah. it was by a famous um, entrepreneur um, the advice is very practical and very logical right to you yeah. know take a break have good work-life balance right now I struggle I'll tell you straight up I struggle on work-life balance I struggle on it, you know. My daughter's already tried to come into this room, you know. Um, I think that, oh, daddy, you're on your laptop again. The thing is this, when you're an entrepreneur, it's infectious, when you, especially when you find your place, especially when you find where you need to live, right, where, where you are de de designed to be. It is challenging to just switch off, right, because your brain is working all the time. Having said that, health is wealth. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it is very, very true. Health is wealth. So you need to be able to balance yourself and program time and program time to do things. Yeah. Program it. Put it in the diary that I'm now going to go and take the kids to the park or I'm going to go and 
hang out with my friends. Because I tell you what, right? There's something practical about that. The more diverse activities you involve yourself in as an individual, the more ideas you generate to help enhance your business. So you see things in your business sector that other peoples won't do. I have influenced the gaming sector, for instance, in Nigeria in a way that nobody else that has got years of gaming experience has influenced. Yet, I'm not from the industry. Why? Because I bring different perspectives. So it's good to downtime. On the point of savings, the best, I gave a lady some advice. She said she wants to save towards to buy in a car. I said, oh. okay, fine. She said, but she's very bad at saving. Can I give her some advice? I said, sure. I said, I'm going to give you the advice that I picked up on the internet from Shaq okay. O'Neal. Shaq O'Neal is the basketball player. He used to play for Orlando, right? All right. He took a sheet of paper. And in fact, let me even try and demonstrate it. Well, no, I won't. He took a sheet of paper and he tore it in. He said, this, is, this sheet of paper is your salary. Then he tore it in half, right? He said, he put oh. half aside. He said, that's your savings. So now you have half of the paper. Then he tore that paper in half and he put the other side on top of the other savings. He said, so now you have a quarter of the paper. He said, live on this. Define your life to live on this. If you live on this from the age, from the day you graduate, you'll be a millionaire by the time you're 40. Wow. So I told the girl, I said, that really influenced me, you know, just that thought process. Okay, I, I was more than 40 by the time I read that. But I like the concept. So she said to me, she said, I can't live on 25%. I said, well, I know, you probably can't. But it's think of that problem. mindset. Think of that mindset. So a year later or so, she said that she wants to buy this car, that she has 10 million saved. I said, wow, wow you saved 10 wow. million? I, wow. I, by the way, I had forgotten totally about the conversation that we had. She, I said, oh, you saved 10 million, you want to buy a car? She said, yeah. She said, um, I said, how did you do that? You talk to me now, Ernest, don't you remember? I said, oh, oh really, yeah. you did it? She said, yeah, I did it. I didn't make 25%, but I did that concept. So I said, okay, wow, well done for you. So recently, two years later, I bumped into her again. And I said, how far did you get your car, blah, blah, blah. She said, no, I didn't buy the car. I just thought to myself, let me invest the money. <laughs> so she's put it in shares. So, wow. so the thing is that saving is very, very important. I cannot very, yeah. stress it enough. I cannot stress it. I started saving from when I was in Maryland. I used to do this, uh, what they call ajo, you know? Um, mm. I used to buy five naira from my friends, keep it. I've, very, I've always been very good at keeping people's money and with money management. Mm. So, <laughs> but, but, while, but you might think that entrepreneurs are contradicting themselves. They're not. What entrepreneurs will say is they save their money, but there's something in business called OPM and it's called other people's money. Yeah. Any, any Titan in industry will be worth billions, but will go and get loan. They will still go and get loan. That's what they mean. They will get loan because, you know, you have to grow your business. You don't use your own wealth. And if, if, if you take the UK in the instance right now and other parts around the world, loans are quite cheap. This is the time, but you need to have a good Mr. business. Mr. Ness, let me come in here. This is very important for me. Okay, so I've hosted quite a lot of business people um, you know, bankers on different shows on business day, and, and they keep saying you don't need a loan to do business. I mean, okay, to start a business. Yes. What's your view on that? Because we're talking about other people's money that you just mentioned, and somebody say raise money, um, personal funds from families and all that. So if you don't have families to raise money from, uh, which might not really be the case, except you have integrity issue with yourself and all that, is taking other people's money to start up a business a very good idea? Well, you know, okay, so yes, and, and I was, and, and I agree with that. And the, if you remember, um, in the last time we were one of these series, this question came up. And one, somebody asked from the floor um, that, um, you know, what if I have no other choice, right? And so the, yes. the feedback is that um, 
do take a loan as a last resort, as a last, last resort, as a last resort. That was what the feedback came. I think it was Ch Ch Mr. Chuku that said that, right? It's a last resort. And, and I agree with that, you know, um, bootstrap as much as you can. Um, raise money from what we call FFF, friends, families, and fools that will support you, right? It's, it's the phrase that we use in the investment industry, right? You know? I don't know why fool had to enter. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. <laughs> I don't know. That's the acronym that people use. But, you know, it's, it's not really, they're not really fools, of course. So you know what I mean? But um, course, yeah, yes. people that will just say, you know what? I like success. I understand what he's doing. You know what? I'm willing to take a, a gamble on him because, you know what? I'm invested in him. This is why I talked about character as being very important. You know, character is crucial, you know, knowing that, you know, that their money, even if it doesn't be successful, they will know that, even if it wasn't successful, they know that it was the character of the guy that made them put it in there. So yes, yeah. I agree. I agree with them that, but also let me tell you this thing, where the loans are cheap and are readily yeah. available, I live by another mantra in my life, which is, it is better to have something and not need it than to need something and not have it. Now, if you have what will come back? What will come back on <laughs> when I host you again? We'll talk about this. Yes, I, this is very important. It's a topic I want us to also yeah. discuss. Okay, <laughs> all um, right, Mr. That's what we're okay. running off this program and not without this very last thing I want to ask you. We've yeah. heard so much about these progresses you've made and all that. What are you working on right now? How is your company making impact, contributing to communities around Africa? What are you working on now? Right, yeah, very, very good. So Right Instinct Limited, as you, I, I set that up in 2011, um, and I've always taken on various projects around Africa. One of those was with BlackBerry, where we led the government innovation in, in uh, the tertiary environment. Also with, with, with the World Bank. That's where I did a lot of work with the World Bank. Now, what we're now currently doing within Right Instant Limited is I'm very, very strong on advisory work. Um, I'm advising a couple of um, CEOs in, um, in Nigeria, for instance, that are seeking to pivot um, their business models. Um, also, very strong focus on personal development is, is a real key thing for me right now. Um, because um, as I talked about the, the spiritual, the sub subconscious and the supporters, we're developing a model which will be launching very soon to help oh. I, I get inundated with requests um, on coaching. So I want to put this into a, into, a, um, into a structure. And that's a really big focus for me. Africa needs it, our youth need it, uh, and I'm more than willing to, to, to start this. And I guess finally is um, um, a very key passion about mine, and you know this very well, success, is that I, um, I do a lot of work for international companies seeking to grow businesses, bringing solutions to businesses in Africa. But I am oh. equally passionate, if not more passionate, about doing the reverse, about taking African country companies and giving them more of a worldwide platform. Um, they found out. In fact, I was going to ask you that, uh, why can't we have Right Instinct International? Why can't we have Elise International and stuff like that? Instead of talking about Virgin and all those people, why can't we export African countries and make them international? Yeah, I, Absolutely. I mean, tot you're totally right. I mean, I, we, we have brilliant developers in, in Africa, in Kenya, in Tanzania, um, brilliant minds, right, that do work for companies abroad. So why can they not be a company? You know, I mean, this is a whole topic in its own right, but, um, but so I'm, I'm very keen to be at the center of all of that. Um, I live, I'm, I'm currently in the UK, but I work very strongly in Africa. And as soon as COVID is off, um, I'm back there again, you know? So, so I, I believe that um, uh, we have a lot of work to do. Um, there's a lot of impact that can be made. Um, but to me, the biggest, um, uh, the biggest fulfillment for me will be seeing, uh, taking people through their journey and creating a better version of themselves than they were when before they met me. That's my focus. Wow. Thank you, Mr. Enes. Well, um, thank you all our viewers on YouTube. I have a few questions from YouTube. Um, I want to thank you so much. 
um, Chica, Exceptional Larry Kane, Chica, Iconic Farms, Junior Jazz. I can't start mentioning all of you. Thank you so much for watching this show. So uh, we have a question from Iconic Farms. Is it what do you think about agricultural business in uh, agricultural business opportunities in Africa? What advice will you give someone who wants to venture into agribusiness in Africa? Over to Mr. Ernest. Yes, well, I think on uh, on this particular topic, you know, we, we know that um, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a basic service. It's like water, you know, um, everybody needs water. Every, the, the, the world needs to be fed. Africans need to be fed. We need to reduce our reliance on imports. Um, and I know that, for instance, that many, many rice farmers have become millionaires because of the government policy on, on imports. So um, I think that there are uh, numerous opportunities in agriculture. I'm a strong proponent on it or of it um, because it can be. It's a very extensive value chain agriculture, from not just farming, from livestock farming, from the processing, from storage, from transportation. It's a very extensive value chain, and so understanding where you sit in that value chain is very, very important. One thing I will say about agriculture is that. Um, it's a good topic, it's a good sector to choose because it's one area that has access to cheap finance. There's a proliferation of organizations in Africa, in Nigeria and worldwide that will offer you grants to help you establish your business. Um, the UK, for instance, were offering artisans, uh, women that created clothes, aimed at women and agricultural based um, business ideas because they understand that Africa being the most arable continent in the world um, has a lot to offer the world and, and itself. So, so I'm, I'm a strong proponent on it. I'm not an expert in that area. And I think, um, but there's so much information available online um, for you to, to delve into. All right, somebody is asking on Instagram, how can we connect with you, Mr. Ernest, to help our businesses um, um, grow? Uh, I think the person is talking in terms of um, offering advisory services to their company or consultancy services and all that. So we're going to make his details available. But in, how can we connect to you? Yes, I mean, well, we, we, our platform should be going live um, next week. I mean, we have an existing... Um, I can be contacted easily on um, info at right-instinct.com. Um, so info at right, as in R-I-G-H-T, hyphen instinct.com. Um, that, um, and, and on, you can also go to the website and see uh, our existing services. I'm always available, um, but we'll be revamping that very, very shortly. Um, more than willing to discuss um, your ideas with you. Okay, Mr. Ness, we're glad to have you on this show today. So this is the end of this program. I want to say a very special thank you to Business Day Newspaper for bringing this program all them to our viewers today and also to you Mr. Ennis for coming on this program today. So this live video, this video will be live on our YouTube channels on Business Day newspaper and many other videos we're going to be having every Saturday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. Thank you so so much for coming Mr. Ennis. We're glad um, you came thank and you. we thank you so much for all the things you shared today. Thank you success. I'm, I'm glad that I was able to make it. Thank you.